All right, all right. Here's hoping you're having a fantastic day. My name is Prosper Tarovinga, and I'm the founder and CEO of Leave Long Digital, um, where we create products for small to medium businesses so that they too can have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So I'm probably going to be looking everywhere else because I think my uh, face is coming up from the screen on top. And I also have a lot of things going on behind the scenes. So today we're talking about the top reasons why a lot of people um, failing, especially when it comes to their digital marketing. And it's not their fault. I mean, obviously, this thing is not more than 30 years old. And if you would, um, you know, think back, I don't know how old you are, but you would find that all this uh, social media and all this digital marketing, everybody's learning as we go. So uh, digital marketing and search engine optimization, those are the things that we actually help our clients with. And they actually have the potential to send a steady stream of, um, of clients to your website and actually generate leads and sales. It actually works really well if it's done right. Um, you know, and, and some people just maybe don't have the patience or the time that we put in to make sure that, um, this happens. So I'm going to be talking about some of the things that some of our clients come to us with, um, pretty much because they are failing to get the results that maybe they were promised about, or somebody talked to them about, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So like, I really want to reiterate that this actually works if it's done right. And also, if you're maybe catching this live stream for the first time, I would want to introduce you to our community. I'll be putting in um, the details of how you can join the community a little bit later on. And if you're interested, just type in the words community right now so that I can see who's online and who um, we're going to be um you know, sending information about the community about in there. That's where I put most of these videos so that you can actually learn and also so that you can uh, create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And one thing that I know is you can actually start earning more money with less struggle. So like I was saying, this thing actually works, man. We're doing it every single day. And if you're wondering why it's not working in your campaigns and maybe you're falling short, it's likely because you're probably doing something wrong, okay? And it's not your fault. There's a lot of information out there uh, regarding how it's supposed to be done or what the best practices are. And half of the time, if you notice, if you're in Australia right now, you might be listening to information that is being uh, peddled by people who are in the States. And it doesn't really correlate with the kind of numbers that we have here in Australia. So I'm just going to give you rough figures. In America, they have about 350 million people, whereas we only have 25 million people. Now, of which um, not a really big percentage of those people are business people or are going to be your customers because not everyone is going to be your customers. So I've compiled a few reasons that I think, um, you know, really bother a lot of people and why their digital marketing might actually be falling short and how it's not their problem and how it can be fixed. I believe everything, um, you know, it is a figure out table. All right. So the thing that is the biggest thing that I find is we are getting the traffic to either our websites or to our social media sites, but we're not actually converting. Okay. Everybody likes buying stuff, but they don't like being sold to. So maybe, um, you know, the, the content that you're putting on your website, you know, the information that you're putting on your website is not really portraying the value that you can offer as a person. Because one of the most common problems that businesses face is that they're not converting the leads that are coming to their websites or the leads that are coming to their social media platforms. So if you're receiving traffic or people are sharing your content or they're liking or whatever it is that they're doing to interact with your information, you might not be receiving any conversions or it might not be resulting in any sort of financial benefit to you because um, I know <laughs> the banks don't accept likes comment and shares, um, you know, as part of you getting a mortgage. So it's not helping you that people are just sharing your stuff, but they're not actually making any transactions or buying from you. Okay. So there could be several things that you can look at, um, especially when it comes to that, um, you know, aspect. One of the things is you really got to viscerally know your market. 
Who is the person that's going to be buying from you? What problems are they going through? What sort of solutions do your services, um, you know, help them with, you know? Because your buyer persona is actually the foundation of every marketing campaign that you should do. Like I said earlier on, not everyone is your customer. So if you don't know who your customers are, what they want, or what makes them tick, or what makes them actually buy, then who's to say that you're even attracting the right kind of audience? Right, because if you're going to be spraying and praying with your marketing, it's not going to help anyone. And these days, every person that's out there who's got a mind or two of their own is bombarded with information already. Okay, how are they going to know that this message pertains to them? How are they going to know that this has got value to them so that they can stop whatever they're doing and start listening, um, you know, to your content? Okay, right. One of the things that if you know the right kind of, um, you know, uh, people that you're sending information to, you need to write better copy. All right. Now, copy is just the words that are uh, put on your website, words that are on your blog, because people are coming to the Internet to get information. And if you want to stand out, you're going to need to invest in really good copywriters. And I can understand you might say, ah, oh, Prosper, you know, copywriters are not cheap, but you know what? This is an investment towards your business. Okay. English for me is not my first language. So if I start writing the way I speak, sometimes some people won't have the patience for that. So it is an investment that will more than pay for itself. We've got a copywriter that we work with, and I was actually collaborating with her in the morning so we could write content and copy for our clients. Because like I said, people are coming to the internet to get information, and Google actually ranks your website based on how long people are staying on that website. The more they jump off and bounce off, it calculates what's called your bounce rate. So you want to make sure you have the right kind of content the right kind of tone, you know, and, and the right kind of consistency that people would actually understand. And it actually makes sense for them to continuously uh, consume that content. Like I said, people are bombarded. No one is going to wait until you get it right. So the copy that you include in your blog articles, in your marketing copy across pretty much all platforms and your landing pages, your emails, all of that has to reflect the value that you can offer within your brand. One other thing that I've also noticed is if, if you don't have the right grammar, if you don't have the right um, information, people are actually going to just assume that you don't have the solution. And I can see Giselle has just joined in. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, it, it, it really makes me excited when people like yourself that are also doing things, um, you know, are paying attention to what we've got to give out here. So cheers for that. Okay. Um, and Giselle, let me know if you want information to join in our community and I'll make sure that you have that. Just type in, um, you know, the words community if you want me to send you information um, about the community where I put all these videos. So if your content is not consistent, if it's written poorly, you know, your clients or your prospects, they're not going to take into consideration um, whatever it is that you're saying. Because these clients or your audience are already on a journey. They are on the way to go somewhere. They are not buying the pen that you're selling. They're not buying the book that you're selling or whatever selfie stick you might be selling. What they're buying is, um, you, know, you know, their own satisfaction. They're buying their own needs. So if you cannot relate to them over your website, what it is that you're going to be providing them, how are they going to understand that you understand them, how are they going to know that you've got the solutions that they're looking for? Okay. And um, Giselle, I'll send you through the information for the community there. Okay. So one other thing that makes or breaks your marketing is because your messaging might not be consistent. Okay. Like I said, people are being bombarded with information. If today you're talking about, say, um, let, let, let's give a specific example. Let's say you're a financial planner and today you're talking about diversifying bonds. Tomorrow you're talking about, um, you know, shares. Tomorrow you're talking about maybe real estate. People would not find what direction you're heading and they don't want to, you know, wait until you've figured it out. So if your messaging is not consistent and you're not offering a unique 
unique user experience or a you know a a, a selling proposition how are people going to understand what it is that you're offering them and why they should care to follow your brand so if your user your your your, your unique selling proposition is not clearly defined or even explained it will only end up you know confusing the people that you you are anticipating will be your your prospects so without a clear message across all your your marketing channels and whatever campaigns you're putting out it would just appear disjointed so if somebody goes on your linkedin and they don't understand what you're doing maybe they go on your facebook they still don't get what it is that you're supposed to be doing guess what grand opening grand closing um you know uh, to them they're just going to go off and and find somebody else who's got their um you know stuff together all right and then one other thing that i find as well is that some people are actually looking at the wrong metrics okay we're measuring the wrong things this is like anything else if you're barking up the wrong tree you are obviously not going to find whatever it is that you're looking for so within your business what are your KPIs what are you actually tracking what is it that you're looking for um you know when you're putting out those digital marketing campaigns how are you going to know when you have arrived because when you're going somewhere or when you're driving in your car guess what happens you put the address of where you're going in the gps you don't put the address of where you are right now okay so once you do that the gps self navigates itself back doesn't it and then from then on you know that okay that's the final destination of where i'm supposed to be going some people don't know what that looks like So if you put in KPIs and anything else that will help you figure out what your campaigns are actually doing are they generating leads or are they for brand awareness or are they actually just so that you have information or content out there so if you're tracking the wrong metrics you know you will keep sinking money in areas that don't even improve your conversions how are you going to know what results you're getting if you don't know what you're measuring right so some people that we work with um you know they own a website obviously and they want more sales say for from the email campaigns and then they start you know tracking the click through rates and whatever sales are coming from those um you know clicks that's a no brainer however they often miss the valuable metrics like how many people have actually opened the emails over time and how many people are actually reading not just the clicks because guess what uh, what other people just do they open an email and look at whatever is highlighted and then click through to that and then if they find that it's not anything that they want guess what it's not going to help them so if you're measuring click through rates you know of landing pages and opt-in pages other people are, some people are just curious and it doesn't mean that they are actually doing anything um you know with the the the, the content that you send them or some people might not even open the emails or some people might open the emails but might not need that solution that particular moment so what are you supposed to do when you're looking at the wrong matrix you need to switch your focus from um if you're measuring rankings or if you're measuring conversions you need to focus on the one thing and whatever goals you are expecting that particular campaign to yield because there are so many vanity metrics that some people follow through how many shares likes or where your keywords are ranking most of them are useful because most of the work that happens behind the scenes within digital marketing you can't measure it so the only way you can track these things is to look at the the things that are obvious okay so those things might be useful but they shouldn't they shouldn't interfere with the conversions because conversions are where the money is at So you want to track the valuable conversions like how many people actually pick up the phone and ring you how many people actually click the link or submit the form or whatever it is that you've asked them to do how many people actually download the little widget that you're selling to them or how many people actually start chatting with you on the live chat because once you measure this then you will start telling you which are the top performing channels and what should you put all your resources in instead of going in for vanity metrics when you want to just maybe satisfy your competition as if you're doing much when you're actually not doing a hell of a lot right so when you know what is actually working then what's working you keep what's not working you ditch
all right? And half of the time, most of these things that happen within the social media or digital marketing front is, is, is not quantitative sort of data, it's qualitative, all right? I know numbers don't lie, but it also pays to look at, at, at the qualitative stuff of it. How many people actually understand what your brand stands for? How many people would actually talk about you at a barbecue? How many people actually know what your brand values are? A lot of people, if you ask them what Nike stands for, they would just give you the rebuttal, just do it or something of that effect. You know, and we know what other brands stand for, but nobody knows what your stories are. Nobody knows where you came from or where you're headed to and why they should actually care that your business exists. All of that information, who is measuring that? So sometimes we end up measuring the wrong things and then we now blame, you know, um, digital marketing and saying that the stuff is broken of course the qualitative stuff is okay but the quantitative stuff which is i mean the quantitative stuff is okay the numbers and everything else the numbers don't lie but the qualitative stuff you're selling to people that have their needs their wants and expectations how are you meeting those what do people say about you when you're not around that's how you measure brand um you know influence and everything else all right, so you want to know what people are actually saying and, and, and who is actually supporting your brand and where they're finding you and how they're sharing your content to, you know, to their peers. And this is why it's important to start running campaigns on the right channels. A lot of us are running campaigns on the wrong channels. All right, your business might not have any use to be in, 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 on Instagram. Your business might not have any use to be, um, you know, on LinkedIn, all right? But then you are just doing it just because you read from a blog that Sally wrote when she was depressed, all right? So this goes back to what I mentioned a little bit earlier on, knowing your buyer persona. Who are you selling to and why should they care? And if you know who that person is, you definitely would know where they congregate, so if you don't invest, you know, invest a bit of time, um, you know, trying to find out where your audience stays most of the time and doing really good customer research, you are going to be spraying and praying with your information. You know, whatever clever gimmicks or giggity gags that you can put out there, because if your audience is not on TikTok, why are you TikToking? You know? So whatever clever marketing ideas you might post on social media, if they fall on deaf ears, have you even tried anything? Okay? So when you understand your audience, all right, you understand what they're doing in this particular moment. You understand, you know, what, what, what they're going through. Because a lot of people, if you understand what their problem is, definitely you would have a solution to that. And there's no getting away from it. Do your customer research. How are you going to serve people that you don't know what their problems are? However well you think you actually know what your customer base looks like or whatever you think your customer is going through right now, chances are you do not fully understand them. These are human beings, all right? Even your partner right now is growing. You see, I've got a five-year-old kid. <laughs> the last time I was doing this video, so it was about two. I was about to say I've got a two-year-old. No, I've got a five-year-old kid. In the last five years, guess what? We've watched her grow, she's flourished, the things she's liked has changed, all of those things. And that's what's happening with human beings. We're not just staying stagnant just because I liked blue in, you know, I preferred blue as a color three years ago. It doesn't mean that's still the same thing right now. How many times are you actually checking in with your customers and asking them, hey, are we still on, on, on par? Are we still doing the right thing? I read somewhere that if you don't communicate with your clients within 30 days, they are no longer your client because people change. Even skin, not, not the color changes, but we lose our skin cells every certain amount of time. So every time you haven't um, been in touch with your clients, they're already a different person. And the more you don't keep in touch with them, somebody is listening to them because people don't just keep quiet. So you need to ask questions like, who are they? Where do they hang out online? How can you be of service to them? You know? And why are they responding to your ads? 
would they you know want you to establish trust with them first how do they want to interact with you how do they view your brand how do they gauge your brand uh, against your competition and once you've built a strong set of customer personas it'll be easy to go out and say hey in this group they are my people in that group i don't think those people um you know are the kind of people that i want to deal with and now you're actually sending a message to people that can actually understand you Right now, if you're quite, if you're listening right now, you probably was wondering what I said because I said it in my own language. So if you're sending a message to people that do not understand who you are or what it is that you're actually saying or doing or trying to help them, they're not going to understand you. All right. One other thing that's also, you know, making people fail is that they have unrealistic expectations all right if you got any questions please type them in the comments below i think i can see a few of them but it, it might not be in real time although this is live and also type in where you're tuning in from it will be good to know who else is watching this okay as millennials i know we've got this whole uh instant gratification that you know if you send sally a text message she will immediately respond if you type in um you know a couple of <clears throat> numbers or whatever um and call a cab and uber arrives and now you can order food that way you can literally order anything under the sun as long as you say okay google I thought she was going to respond because she's always listening. So a lot of people have a, a few unrealistic expectations based on who they are or what it is that, um, you know, they, they, they think their business is worth, you know? So before any sort of campaign starts, look, you know, yes, there is a problem, Google. Thank you. All right. <laughs> so before any sort of campaign starts, you need to first establish the realistic expectations. And by realistic, I'm saying real world expectations, not the way you want the world to be, but the way the world actually is. No one is expecting your post right now. No one is expecting your tweet right now. So that's being realistic. How are you going to break the pattern when somebody's busy scrolling or doing whatever they're doing in their life? How are you going to stop them from just going through their day and pay attention to you? Because nobody cares. No one cares. All right? So low, a lot of business owners, they make the mistake of working with very limited resources, putting out one post and think that's it, and not dedicating enough time, money, and effort to make sure that their campaigns are working. Just because they read somewhere in a blog that oh, this and this works, etc., etc. Yeah? So this will only set you up for disappointment. And I call it a crisis of anticipation, you know? And then they stop campaigns before they've even started, you know? Sally is not waiting for you to get it right. Sally is not waiting for your post or your tweet or your blog right now. She's busy living her life. How can you be part of her conversation? How can you be part of a day-to-day -day existence? That's being realistic. So you want to set smart goals. Obviously, I don't know if they taught you in like entrepreneur school. It's like what? Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and timely. Because these are the goals that will be achieved in a cost-effective manner. You know? Like some people come to me and say, hey, how, am I, how long will it take for me to rank number one in Google SERPs? These things take time. Google was not just waiting for your website to, to arrive. There are other people that are already in line for that. So I want to tell you to be patient. All right. The digital campaigns that actually take time for them to produce results. You can run a campaign today just to get data and then put another campaign to act on that data. You know, like SEO and content marketing, for instance, this can take months before you even start to see the needle moving. Social media marketing, even so, because these people are not just waiting for your website to come today. It's just a long game that needs to be played. And you got to be realistic about how long it's going to be before you actually start seeing your return of investment. You know, 
And no one is just waiting for you to be ready, man. No one is just waiting or is going to come and knock on your house's door and say, hey, right now, this is the right time for you to start putting content up. Competition is tough, especially in SEO, you know, because SEO can get really technical and daunting. And it's a highly competitive space. And if you're finding it hard to rank, there's several things that might actually help. Oh, you know, because a lot of people just think, oh, well, you just put your website in line and then all of a sudden you actually start ranking. One thing is, do you actually have a product? Do people actually care that it exists? Or are you just a me to, you know, a commodity that's out there and you're hoping that, you know, whatever you've put out there, people are just going to triple stumble and fall um, while, you know, looking at whatever your mediocre content would be. When a lot of us are not differentiating ourselves enough, I look in the news feed. Yeah, there's so much mediocrity, bro. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting to, um, yeah, scrolling through my news feed. I'm just like, bro, do you even tie your own pants from the things that you're saying and you expect people to just whatever, hand you money or whatever it is that you're expecting? Anyway, you know, so if you're not differentiating yourself, you should check out what your competitors are doing and see what it is that you're doing. All right. And then try and see how you're actually filling in the gap. Try and see how you're being different in, 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 in the eyes of the people you're going to be demanding money off of. You know, for instance, if you're not putting out content, if you're not adding videos on your, um, in, in your, in your whole, you know, arsenal of things that you're doing, if nobody knows who you are or what it is that you do, or if they cannot even defend you to themselves, let alone to people who are also going to help them make decisions, how do you think you're going to survive in any, um, you know, conversations? Because half of the time, our competition is not, you know, the, the, the same, the, the people that sell the same widget as us. Our competition is our customers' brains. Where do we sit in their brains and how do they know that we are the people with the right kind of solution to help them out? You know, are you also showing up every single day? I mean, I, I can't say much, but I know that somehow some of my content pieces are seen every single day because maybe it's stuff that I did years ago. And then, um, you know, I repost it so that people can have an opportunity to see that, hey, wait a minute, this guy is still current. This guy is actually relevant. So you can also write about stuff. I'm not saying show up in video. What? How are you? How, how, how do you show up to your clients? Because people are coming to the internet to get information. And if your business is the one that's providing that information, they get to know you, like you, and trust you. And people do business with those they know, like, and trust. All right? So find out how you can be different. Find out how you can be patient. And just really stay updated because with the whole digital marketing landscape, things are changing. You literally have to be keep running to stand still. Stay updated. Algorithms are changing on a regular basis. You know, when, when, when Facebook Live started, I was like right on it. And then it died down because every Sally, Jack and John was doing it. But now it's sort of dying down and now is a good time for experts to actually solidify who they are and how they can, you know, help people and have businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. So make sure you keep an eye on trends. Make sure you're on top of all of these solutions because people will only buy from you because you're providing value. We get paid in direct proportion to the value we bring into the marketplace. How are you making other people's lives better with the work that you're putting out there? All right. And once you've done that, make sure that your site is optimized properly so that people can literally jump on that site, find out what it is that you're, you're offering, and then eventually communicate with you and ask you to help you. And then they ask you to help them with their problems. You know? I mean, seriously, how confident are you that the information on your website right now would literally let me know what it is that you do and how you can help me instantly? How confident are you that your on-page SEO and, and, and your off-page SEO is representative of your brand and how other people can actually be in touch with you? So this is why sometimes, 
you know, we're not doing enough for our businesses to warrant us to want, um, you know, information or to, to, to rank high or to be found or, you know, for, for people to actually do business with us. What have we done in order for that to happen? You know, you need to make sure that you're providing that value. You're literally making sure that people understand who you are and how you, you can be of help to them. And once you've done that, keep doing it over and over and again so that the many people that you help, they would then pass on your message to their friends. And you don't have to start paying for ads. So you might want to think about conducting maybe an SEO audit or, um, you know, a social media audit. I would like to help you. So if you look at on the screen right now, um, type in the words community.leavelongdigital.com.au and come and join us in the community. I think we've got about 300 or 400, um, you know, um, small to medium businesses. Some of them are not that active, but the ones that are in there are literally creating businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. All right. This has been fun creating this. Um, it's the first time I have done this this year. And I'm supposing if I keep doing one of these, it will be amazing. So in the comments below, I want you to write topics that you think um, we should talk about. Um, you know, if, if you've got any pressing issues with regards to, um, you know, your, your, your social media, um, anything to do with your uh, marketing and everything else, I've just put in some of the services that we can help you with on the so SEO, content marketing, email marketing, uh, social media management, and the marketing of it, and also the strategy because we created, um, you know, a blueprint that we know has been helping other people have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. In any case, thank you so much for tuning in. This has been Prosper, and I really enjoyed creating this piece of content. If you enjoyed it, make sure you share it around and also just ask me any other questions in the comments below. Bye for now.